Hello my fellow geeks, I'm Mark and today on Elite Geek we're going to update the firmware in the Anycubic Photon Mono. Now this is beta firmware, so do this at your own risk. I've been running it for about a week now, I haven't posted this yet because I didn't seem to do anything. But I figured out why, well people on the group figured out why, or people in other comments figured out why. So thank you very much for that, for providing this firmware and discussing it so we could figure out what was going wrong. So I'm gonna first show you how to update this firmware, how to install the firmware. But first, I don't really have an intro on this channel, but I'm gonna show you what it probably should be because this has a very appropriate disclaimer. So now you have a glimpse of me. Think of this as a disclaimer before I claim you mine, for you'll find my flaws outweigh my talents any day, but if you're all right with that, we should be fine. Okay, enough of that. So the link is going to be down below that you can find, and this is to my Google Drive. You cannot download this officially yet. There's not an official release. I will update this to an official release when it comes out. So right now, this is beta that's been kind of passed around and Anycubic's given it out to some people and other people not. So if you aren't comfortable with this, I totally understand. You don't have to do this. There's no requirement to do this. But if you want to do this, here it is. I think I need more disclaimer, more, more disclaimer. Okay, here it is. So it's mono beta firmware files v017. I've got this open in Firefox here. It might be different depending on your browser a little bit, but the main thing is you want to get it downloaded. So you can do that from Google Drive by clicking here. You do not have to sign in. You're not required to do that or anything. I'm not collecting your data. Google probably is, but I'm not. Download, this will download. I'm going to save file, and this will just download to my download folder. So this will download the mono beta firmware files .zip. Now this is just a .zip, so your Windows can open it. You just double click it and it will open. And then there's a folder here. If you wanna copy it somewhere else first, that's fine. But you do have to go in here and get to these files and copy these to your USB stick that you're going to put in the printer to upgrade. You don't have to have the readme instructions. That just shows basically, I just wrote that in case somebody doesn't watch this video and gets this file and wants to do the upgrade, there's the instructions how. So copy these two files to your USB stick and take that USB stick and go put it in your printer. First, I would double check the version you have, go to system and info, and it'll be version 015 is what I had. Um, then you go to print and you wanna print the .bin file first. It'll ask you to upgrade the firmware and hit enter. So just wait. This doesn't take very long. See, it's already done, it's like five seconds. This will finish and then the system will reboot. So then we have to do it again with the second file. Go to print and print the AJE file. Update firmware, yes. Now this one takes forever. I thought it had failed. I ended up going away and only because I was recording this did I see how long it took. So let's see here, we're at a minute and 14 seconds and it's right at five minutes before it finishes. Let's see, there. So five and a half minutes is how long this thing takes. That's how long it takes to update this, but it did finish and then it reboots and then we are upgraded. See how long did I wait before I came back? Oh no, I did watch that one. Okay, so service and info, and now we're on 1.7, UI001. Some people got a UI file that they run also, but it's version one. It's not really updated, so it's not a big deal. So that's, that's really it. That's all you have to do. Now, though, why do you want to do that? Well, the main reason is to get anti-aliasing working. So let's go see what happened when I tried that. So I did several prints trying to get anti-aliasing to work and it, it just didn't. That's why it took me so long to get this video. I have a base print here and uh, you can kind of see the lines there. There, there we go. There's, there's the lines and you can see them. I can feel them. Uh, I don't think this one basically had any anti-aliasing at all. This was before I did the upgrade. So then after the upgrade, um, I have anti-aliasing on and it's a good print. It's a good, I did this one at 45 degrees or this was the 46 degree one. So I've got angles here. This side's pretty flat though, but it's not any, there's no anti-aliasing really going on here. You can see right there. I mean, it's still a pretty good print. It's just not, you, you could tell in the curves and stuff. 
anti-aliasing real, hasn't really kicked in. Then after the upgrade, you can see those lines, but I can't feel them. Uh, you get a different color to them when you get anti-aliasing. That feels though perfectly, this is, this is perfectly, perfectly smooth. But this side, if I painted this, if I prime it and paint it, I'm not gonna feel those at all. I'm not gonna see those at all. Those are all gonna totally go away and that is gonna be smooth. The thing is, is it feels softer. Like, and that's what you get with anti-aliasing. They're just not quite as uh, strong lines. So on those edges, it's doing a lighter curing, but it makes it so this feels just ridiculously smooth. There, you can still see in that ridge, there's a little bit, but I can't feel it. Like it's, it's just not there. And again, that's where I'm gonna be painting most of my models. But again, this just feels softer. It looks better, and you can tell I didn't get it fully clean because I was in a rush. I was so excited when this worked. I just threw it into my PA, so shuffled it around a little bit and then came back out. There we go. I had to switch to a different recording program. So there on the left is the one, and I can feel just a little texture. That is uh, before the upgrade. The one on the right, there is still some texture there, but you can see it's uh, it's smoother. Most of it is at least. There's a little uh, little shine. But those are pretty sharp edges there and just straight layers and kind of you can see the gradient and that's what the anti-aliasing really does. There it is in his cape. So you can still see they're not gone, but it is smoother. The one on the left is uh, before the upgrade. Those are straight solid and try and get, I mean, it's hard to even find them by comparison there. There they are here with my fingernail. I can feel those. Let's see how these are. I mean, it's just, it's just smoother. That, that's the only way to put it. It's just smoother. Okay, now the bad news. The only way this seems to work is if you slice it in Photon Workshop. Now, it's not a big deal. I didn't support these files. These were all supported. Well, I didn't support them in Photon Workshop. I supported them in Lychee, exported them as an STL, and then imported them here. That works great for these models because they're all solid. I love the way Lychee supports hollow models. I love its internal lattice. That's why I use it most of the time but you can't export the files that way. So while this works great for these models, it's not gonna work for my hollow models. I don't know why anti-aliasing from Lychee or Chitubox, I tried them both, uh, they, they don't work. I, I don't know why, but you have to go in here, set anti-alias, I set this, the ones you saw, I set them to eight and uh, it definitely worked. I'm gonna talk with the Lychee team and see if they know if there's a way to adjust it or if they have one of these to see what's going on. But for now, if this works for you, well, hopefully it works for you, or maybe they'll fix that and once the official release comes out, it'll just work the way it should with everything else because Lychee and Chitubox slicing with anti-aliasing both work on my Mono X after the update, but they just don't seem to on the Mono and I don't know why. So as I mentioned, do this at your own risk. I'm not gonna be responsible for you bricking your mono printer if you wanna wait till there's an official release. I think they're just gonna upload these same files. That's what they did with the Mono X. I doubt there's any change. It's probably gonna be exactly these same files when they're officially available, but that is what it is. If you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below wherever those are. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to put out tons of content. Basically, I need to figure something out. I figure it out and then I make a video about it so you can figure it out too. That's all, that's all I'm doing here. Same thing I used to do with my old channel, Drone Racer 101, if you happen to be from there. If you wanna support the channel, there are multiple links down below. You can buy me a coffee or part of a bottle of resin. Also, I just updated Patreon, so I'm gonna start having some posts there so we can discuss uh, other options for the printer along with a Discord, and I've got some goals there for some additional giveaways. I'm not giving away the mono, but I am gonna have some printers there eventually. So until next time, remember, you're gonna be a geek, be an elite geek. I need, I need a new, I need to, maybe I'll cut one out. Maybe I'll print out an elite geek logo on here. Why do I have this? You don't, you don't wanna see this. This, this is, this is better than this, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. On a side note, if you found anything that will get resin off the front of your uh, mono case, let me know, because I've tried IPA and couldn't get it to work. I haven't worried about it too much, but yeah, that looks disgusting on camera.